Hey everyone, Jalapeno Gal back with another little tutorial that I want to share with you. Um, just a couple little techniques that I've been learning the last few days to really give the picture a pop. Uh, what you're going to need in this video, if you're following along, is Prismacolor's Olive Green, Kelp Green, and Marine Green. These are the three that I pretty much use in all of it. And then I am using paper stumps. Let me show you what these are just in case you're not familiar. I use paper stumps with a blending medium. And the blending medium I use is Windsor and Newton blending and glazing medium. <clears throat> and I just pour a little bit into the cap and dip my paper stump into that. So I'm going to start off with olive green. And what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm trying to figure out where... I want to do the darkness first and I come in and do a little dark. So I'm going to put dark where all these little clumps of grass are. Because once I get it mixed up and blended, I'm going to come back with uh, the Stadler fine liners with some brown and some green and do some blades to give it a more um, 3D look, I guess, or 2D look. So it kind of stands off the page instead of being a flat colored page and at the end of the video I'll show you the the rest that I've done so you can get an idea of how this is going to look in the end so I come in and I do that and then I'll come in and do some light circles through here birds always relax me when I color and I think that's the main reason that we all do this for relaxation and despite what some therapists might say it really is relaxing and if you find that you know it's becoming stressful for you and not relaxing then maybe find another picture because it's supposed to be fun okay so what I'm going to do now is come in with this paper stump and let me pause you I'll be right back I need to get a piece of paper okay I'm back sorry about that when I'm using my paper stumps I like to try to clean it um, I know people use files and sharpen them I don't know how to do that yet so I just clean it off so what I'm gonna do is take my thing my paper stump and dip it in the lid and come in in small gentle circles and you can do like this too if you want but I just I'm in a habit of circles and pull that color out and you don't have to apply pressure I mean a little bit but not any more than your color pencil One of the things that I really like about this so far is that I'm not getting a, a real waxy buildup when I use this versus the pencil, the blender pencil, which is great. I use it all the time. And I also use the blending marker as well. Uh, this is, like I said, really my first time ever using this stuff. So I'm just sharing what I'm learning as I go. And what I found is after I use this, after I go over and do this, I can go over it again with different, with the same colors or darker colors, and there's not a waxy buildup that prevents me from adding those colors on top. I mentioned earlier coming in with um, my fine liners and adding blades of grass. You want to make sure this is really dry before you do that because <clears throat> it'll definitely ruin them. I've been there, done that. So now I'm going to come in with my kelp green, which is pretty much the same shade, but it's just a little bit darker. It's got some brown in it instead of just straight 
um, olive green. It's got a little bit of brown, which adds some stuff to it. Because, you know, grass is not all the same color. If you go sit in the grass and check it out, you've got yellows, you've got browns, you've got blacks. I mean, green, all different color greens. I typically come in darker when I'm up against stuff. There's going to be a little bit of a shadow. In the rest of my picture, I've got the sun mainly coming from this way, so the shadows are behind stuff. And you're about to see how it pulls the colors together. So you can see it kind of gives it a look like it's actually grass and not just colored green on the paper. I'll come back in with the fine liners and show you guys. Coming back in with my olive to do a little more of this area. Sorry if my fingernails look jacked up. I was letting my I let my daughter practice on me and it's been a few days, so it's chipped and worn and needs to be redone now. And the paper stumps come in different sizes, different tips for these tiny little areas. This um, picture that I'm actually doing is a poster, like a full-size poster that I found on Amazon. And I'll add the links in the description box, but it's like a whole a village of gnomes and uh, it's really interesting it's gonna take me a while but um, there's like a whole line of posters out there there's a dragon poster there's a uh, balloon festival it's hot air balloons at like a state fair uh, there's a Mandela madness one I used to like Mandela's I don't really care for them much anymore I, I like doing uh, things that have you know pictures and not just Repetitive. Oh heck, let's just do this green too.
I hope I'm not going off of the camera. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do some shading with the mushroom tops onto the ground. I got to get this first. grass is typically not directional, meaning that it goes in all different kinds of ways and directions. And when I do the deal with the fine liners, it's going to be like those little clumps of grass that come out of those darker areas. And I'll come back in with green on top. Like that. It's going to look really cool. You'll like it. Okay, back with the, uh, the cap. Be careful coming up on stuff that you might have come out the line on because it will pull the, the colors from other items into your grass or whatever you're coloring. I've never done grass before. This is kind of my first time. and um, I went on YouTube looking for videos on how to color grass and that's how I came up with these colors. Olive green, kelp green. How much quicker that is than a blender pencil. Again, no waxy residue. Let's see. Look at that. love how it pulls the color. I haven't tried this with any other brand. I've only tried this with Prismacolor. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Leave comments. Let me know if you've tried it with other brands. I'm going to jump over here to Kelp. Which again is, is a lot of the same color, but it just has a little more brown than the olive does. See, he's got his feet here, so if I'm imagining the sun coming in on this side, then he's going to have some shadow right here. Or, you know, maybe not. He's sitting down, so I don't know. I just imagine if he's sitting in the grass that there's going to be a little shadow where his feet are actually in it. And when I come back in with my fine liner, I'll do the directional over his feet as well so that it's it looks like he's actually in the grass. Oops. Sorry. I have seizures, so sometimes my hand will jerk. It's rather frustrating, but it's doable if you are out there and you have seizures. You can fix almost anything. Let's see if I can get outside of my zone. Okay, y'all are still in there. So, I come back in here. 
my olive and kind of finish this out. This medium really grabs a hold of that pigment. A lot of people ask about how come my how I get such vibrant colors, and it, honestly, it's it's really Prisma colors. I mean, they have a really vibrant pigment in their pencils, and anytime you smush it down, like with the blender, um, it just it just brings it out so well. Now since I have this mushroom cap here, that's that's why I'm doing it a little darker to give it the illusion of a shadow from the mushroom top. So this is where I come in with the marine green because it's a little darker. Let's see, this is the kelp and this is the marine. Come back in with the kelp. Give you guys an idea. Imagine that there's some shadows in here and shadows here. So I'm going to pull and do the same thing that I was doing. I just need to take my meds today. Oh, see?
don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube if you like this video or if it's helpful to you in any way. I do have other videos um, with some tutorials like this um, and some of the Joanna Basford books. And uh, I have also have a lot of book reviews that I've gotten, um, you know, uh, that I've bought and some that I really like and others that after a couple pages I just didn't care for. But it, it shows you pictures that are in the books and it shows you um, the pros and cons, like if it's perforated pages or if they're one-sided, uh, how much they cost. Uh, and most of my videos will have links in the description box that will uh, take you directly to whatever's in the video if you're interested in it or if you just really like that book. Uh, I also have another video that explains uh, what mediums are my favorite and why. So a lot of people are always asking me what I use. I'm not a professional. There's like way better people out there than me. I'm just like bringing you on my journey and what I learn and how I learn it. Sometimes it's a little easier for beginners to follow behind someone who's, you know, not exactly professional yet, but teaches as they go. I know for myself, I mean, I, I really enjoy watching videos and how, that's how I've learned a lot of my stuff is watching videos and in my Facebook coloring groups. I get a lot of good tips, uh, but sometimes, you know, watching the professional videos, like, is really intimidating. Like, I'll never be able to do that. But with practice, you can. You just have to convince yourself. I hear a lot of people say all the time, I can never pick colors like you do. Let me tell you, when I first started, I sucked. The color wheel is amazing. Just looking at other people's pictures, amazing. Um, if you really, really look and pick out all the colors and some of the things that you find that you like, it'll start making more sense to you. So like if you're looking at a red flower or like a red rose, if you're really looking at it, you'll find the darkness and the light and where the color should be darker to create the, the illusion that it's a real flower when you color it or if you're looking at something like the grass if you really look you're not just gonna be like oh it's green grass you're gonna be like oh look there's yellow there's brown uh, I mean you'll see you'll really be able to dissect the colors like now it's my husband laughs at me because we'll get in the car and I'll look at the sky and be like that's gray lavender that salmon pink <laughs> And I'm naming off the colors of these things as if it was, you know, colored with Prismacolors because that's what I do. That's what I use mostly. <clears throat> but once you can start picking out colors and objects, it becomes a lot easier to color. A lot easier to bring to life. And if you get tired of watching me do this, just skip to the end. You can check out the wide view I have of this whole poster that I've done this way. Okay. I think what I'm going to do for you guys, that, that's quite enough. Let's pull out these. Prismacolor, or excuse me, those fine liners. Let me show you how I do the blades of grass. I'm going to start off with my brown. And like I told you with his feet, I'm going to come in like this. And yes, I will color his shoes, but it's not gonna, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's not gonna make a difference on the fine liner. You're not gonna be able to see through that. 
Or it's not going to cover it, I should say. Then I'll come in with the green behind it. I attempted yellow at one point, but it just doesn't work because it's everything's already so dark. And I will come in and do a lot of that over here. I just wanted to give you a, an example of the effect that the grass has and uh, how important it is to add your shading. Um, I'm going to pause you guys for a minute and zoom out and show you everything I've already done so you can get the full effect of what this will turn into. Okay, so far this is what I've got and this is what I've done with the grass and I think this is my favorite how I've got the shadow with the pen, the fence post but you can tell that it actually gives the way that it's being done it actually gives the picture depth like it's not just flat you can tell that objects are moving and the objects are in the back and objects that are in the front so I'm really satisfied with it um, I still have some work to do like on the turtle and whatnot but it's coming out very well um, I'll show you the whole picture. That's a big poster. It's a whole gnome village. And I will put links in the description box for this poster if you're interested. 
So I guess that's about it for today. I have a little bit more of a grassy area and I'm done with that. So uh, if you like this video, if it's helped you out some, don't forget to subscribe. Like, hit like on the video, leave comments in the comment section if you have any ideas or tips for me or other viewers because we all have to learn from each other. That's the only way we can do this as a coloring community. So you guys have fun. Get back to me. Let me know what you think.